This video is sponsored by Instant Gaming. Instant Gaming offers a huge range of discounted games on all platforms, including Planet Coaster and all of its DLCs. So if there are any discounted games or game add-ons you would like to pick up, then please check out my affiliate link for Instant Gaming in the description. This is a video that I've been creating for quite a while now and a video that I've wanted to create for quite a while. As I'm sure you'll already know if you've watched my stuff before, but creating realistic coasters is basically what I do. Even in park series, one-off coaster videos or the challenge videos, I try to make my coasters as realistic as possible. And with that, I've obviously brought along a long list of comments on pretty much every video that I do, asking how I do certain things to make the coasters realistic. So I thought I would just make a dedicated tutorial on how to make a realistic coaster in Planet Coaster. This video will be the full complete tutorial you need to make a realistic coaster where I'll be going through the 4 meter methods, smoothing, different elements and transitions, custom supports, transfer tracks, backstage area and many other things. So let's begin. So the first thing I'd look at with your coaster is the layout. Specifically, who is it for? Like what's the intended audience? Is it for adults? Is it for kids? Is it a family thrill coaster? Working out your intended audience is probably one of the most important first steps you need to do when looking at how to design your coaster. Then the next thing I do is look at some inspiration. This could be from visiting actual parks, looking on Google, looking on RCDB, looking at what other creators are doing on Planet Coaster, just to give you as much inspiration and ideas as possible to make your layout for your coaster as interesting as possible. Then once you know who your coaster's for and what you want it to look like, you can start designing. Now for this tutorial, I'm just going to make a simple launch coaster. Now there are quite a lot of launch coasters already in the game, such as the Mac ones, the Intamin ones, even some BNM ones and some Vacoma ones, so there are all sorts of launch coasters you can do, but for today I'm just going to do the Premier Rides Skyrocket 2. Now I'm using this track type just because it looks more like the new Intamin track type than the uh, launched Intamin in the game, and the Mac Hyper is a Mac, so it's not really an Intamin. So I'm going to be using the Premier Ride Skyrocket 2, because it's kind of the closest to the new gen Intamin looking track we've got in the game, I think. And when I mentioned inspiration at the start of the video, my main inspiration for this is going to be the Batman Gotham City Escape Coaster Part 1 of Madrid in Spain. I'm basically going to be doing a smaller version of that. So let's begin. You can take inspiration from different coasters, of course. It doesn't all have to be from the same coaster, so I'm going to do almost like a pre-drop just like the first launch onto Tatis so it'll come out of the station do a little drop and then straight into the first launch so I build using the four meter method which I think is probably the best you can use you can go smaller if you have mods on PC but on console and on the non-modded PC game you can't do this so I would recommend building four meter track pieces this is just so you can get the most precise like angles and transitions you want in your coaster designing and it just makes smoothing a lot easier so I'm going to bring it down just out of the station like this and bring it down a bit more steeply and then flatten it off at the bottom. And I'm also going to turn the supports off because later in the tutorial I'm going to show you how I custom support coasters so the supports are staying off on this one. Then the next thing I'm going to do is add the actual launch section and then I'm going to put in uh, the launch track pieces. I'm going to add I think just three of these and then you can select the whole track piece set and set the speed. I'm going to put the speed around 50 and then the acceleration about 8. And then one of the best things you can do when you are designing a coaster is to test it. If you keep it in test mode for the whole time, you can just see what it's doing and obviously check on the G-forces. So G-force is looking pretty good. It accelerates to pretty much bang on 50 miles an hour, which is exactly what I wanted. So after this, I'm going to go back to the 4 meter track sections and I'm going to build a kind of Batman the Ride uh, of Part 1 of Madrid style top hat where it's going to come into a top hat but be a beyond vertical drop so I'm going to bring it up um, only slightly and then because I want this coaster to be realistic from this section on I'm going to have the banking offset turned on this basically just means that when you're banking the coaster it banks one meter away from this center point whereas if I just turned it off it will bank just around the center of the track instead whereas if you bank it, it Whereas if you put the banking offset on a meter, it banks a meter away from the center of the track. This is just so that heart lining, which is like why a heart line rule is called a heart line rule, is because the center of rotation is where the rider's chest is, where the heart is. Heart line rule, that's why it's called that. So you need your banking offset on one to make it more realistic and basically just more comfortable for the riders, because if the ride experience isn't comfortable, then it's not going to be a particularly enjoyable coaster. So I'm just going to bring this section up gradually like this. I don't really want this ride to be too tall because it's kind of a smaller coaster anyway. So I'm gonna bring that up pretty much vertically, like this. 
and then I'm going to start spinning out without bringing this back down and now that is flat on the top bring this down a little bit more as you can see because it's in test mode that comes over the top at a pretty much perfect speed and then you can just bring it back down and as you've probably noticed it has crashed straight back into the launch straight but I've done that on purpose I'll show you why in a second but as you can probably tell this isn't the most well profiled thing in the world but you can edit it afterwards so I'm going to give this a bit of smooth what I normally do is when I'm editing certain parts of a coaster just to be more precise the game will automatically select two track pieces like this when you click so you can make quite precise movements of just these two track pieces like that and then now I think it's probably a good time to talk about smoothing so smoothing in this game there's so many different ways to do it as you can see I have the uh, ASC smoothing mod installed but I'm not going to use it for the purpose of this tutorial just because this can be for console and for PC if you haven't got the mods. So basically what I'm going to do is for this top pack because it's crashing straight back into the bottom of the track I'm going to add in a straight track piece here and then I'm going to select the whole top hat from about this point, about there and then move it over a tiny bit, one less track piece, move it over a little bit more and that just gets it nicely profiles as it comes around the top and obviously it misses the launch straight on the way back which is probably the most important thing and then in terms of smoothing just to keep these pieces flat a good trick that I do is you can make them a block section like that block sections can't go beyond vertical so I would pop another two block sections at the top here and then if you grab four meter track sections which is how I smooth so grab four meters and then what you would do is turn the test off you grab your four track sections, hit smooth, and then move that section forwards. Smooth again, move it forwards, smooth again. And this is how you smooth. It's called a four meter track smooth. And so hence why I've used the four meter uh, long pieces of track. You smooth four of them at once, then you move it just one up and smooth the next four. I mean, you can just use the spam smooth tool, especially for pieces that are all just straight like this. But the only problem with doing that is it can eliminate certain amounts of banking. So the best way to do it is just using the four meters. Once I've smoothed that piece, I'm going to remove these two flat pieces and then just give it all probably one more pass of smoothing just to kind of get those smoothed out parts level. And there you go, you have your first top hat element. The shaping isn't perfect, I might go back and edit it a bit later, but it's, it's definitely uh, usable. So obviously you can test it straight after this just to see what your g-forces are. It's mainly the vertical G's you want to look at when you're doing like big height changes like this. So it gets over the top with pretty much perfect speed. Um, let's have a look at the G-Force when it gets to the bottom of the top part. So it is it goes up to about 6, which isn't ideal. 6 is quite high. So what I'm going to do instead is if I reduce the friction a little bit, I'll put it on about 0.7, then I can reduce the height of the top hat. Just like this, smooth that. It shouldn't need as powerful a launch to actually get up there, so I can reduce the power of the launch. So the G-forces I think are still a little bit high, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this launch section. So I've moved the launch section back a little bit, and then what I'm going to do is start bringing up the track a bit sooner for this, which will probably actually make the shaping a bit nicer. And then obviously you can go back and smooth this out. Just like that, give it a nice smooth, and then you can see as it goes through the G-forces, there you go, they get to about 5. So 5 is kind of a nice maximum you want to get to, and it goes pretty much perfect speed over the top hat. If you're wondering how I got the shape in for this top hat, I just quite simply have looked at the Batman coaster that much. <laughs> I've, uh, I really like the coaster, so I've become a little bit fascinated with it, so if you just look at the reference photos enough, or even have a reference photo like next to you on your phone or something, then you can cross-reference it as you're building it to make sure that you're getting the uh, transitions and the shaping all correct. Okay, so we've got our first major element in, and I think now we should probably add some sort of big airtime hill sort of thing to like turn it round because I'm kind of thinking do a simple L-shaped layout just to keep things well simple <laughs> so I'm gonna bring up a little bit something sort of like this it's nice snappy kind of intimate style turns and then this is kind of like creating the start of this L-shaped layout I was on about 
and that's kind of like the basic shape of this snapping airtime hill sort of thing. I'm going to bring this out a little bit, then you can just do the same as before by keeping the flat parts that you want to stay flat as block sections, smooth, forward track sections at once, move it forward, so you can do another smoothing pass once you have removed all of these pieces. And then at the top of this I am just going to bank this a bit more because obviously as you know when you smooth it the banking kind of gets taken away doesn't it? There you go. So there's your kind of turnaround piece. I'll give you a bit of airtime going into it and then I snap on the exit of the element. And then I think what we'll do is, because this is going to kind of be like an L shape and it's kind of almost creating like a plaza here, I think we should probably have a stall. So the best way I have found to make these is, make sure that that is perpendicular to that, otherwise it's going to annoy me. <laughs> um, the best way I've found to do these is to bring your element up like this. Then obviously you've got your banking offset turned on. I turn on angle snap just for this specific element. I wouldn't normally like that. And then once it's at 180, like this, I normally put two kind of 15 track pieces, two flat ones, and two more 15 ones. Then you can start to bring it back down again. Then what I would do is I would take this top piece of the five pieces you put in, the two 15 angled ones, the flat one like that, and then smooth this like that. And then just to kind of know that you want that bit flat, I would put it as a different color, just for the time being. It's a good way to remember it because you can't make this bit flat with the block section because it's upside down. And then if you make this bit flat here with the block section, then you can grab your four track pieces like last time, smooth it, move it along, smooth it. And then again I would do the same on this side, so smooth, one up, smooth, one up. Obviously you can do multiple passes of these smooths, I would recommend definitely doing that. And do the same smoothing pass again but without obviously the block sections being there. And then I would probably go onto the first section of the stall, maybe even the second one, just like that. And then do the same on the other side, so I go four, smooth. And then obviously the best way to uh, test whether you, what you've done is all right, is to just ride it. So you can put it in um, front bumper view to give you the smoothest ride. So it comes down the beyond vertical drop, nice snappy airtime hill turnaround goes into the stall, so as you can see it still needs a bit more smoothing, but the profile is actually quite good. So this next part here, after it's reached down to the floor again, I am just going to put in a little speed hill that will offer probably not so much ejector, it might be a little bit of ejector, but probably more floater, we can test that to actually uh, find out what it does. If the banking offset is still on, no it's turned itself off. <laughs> uh, it's going to come from that into wave turn stall sort of thing a bit like the one on Tutatis that kind of goes underneath the top hat again I've got a reference photo of the Tutatis one next to me that I'm looking at now so I know what I'm wanting to do with it and then I'm going to just start to bring it up a little bit and then this again is going to do one of the Tutatis style um, What's the word for it? Heartline roll. So it'll come out of this inversion, uh, come out of this element, sorry, into an inversion like this. So it'll be quite a high speed inversion this one, and it's going to start to like spiral down as it gets to the bottom. It's not going to be going insanely fast at this point in the ride, so you will probably get a nice bit of hang time off of that element, which should be cool. And I'm also, just while we're here, going to reduce the height of this just so I can probably try and get a little bit more speed out of that element. There we go, and obviously I will come back later and smooth all this part. Like I said, this is just going to be quite a shorter ride, so from here it's going to kind of make its way back to the station. So what I would then recommend doing is building the end of the station. So just because of where this track is coming in, so it'll be about here if I keep it in a straight line. It doesn't have to be. Um, you kind of want a twist in the track here. You want this to be drive tyres. Put that 4 meter track section in there. Then I'm going to add in the first block section, so you'd kind of want to take a reference of about how long the train is. It's about three cars, so it's about there to there. It probably looks like it's about 12, but just so the supports, I don't have to custom support this bit, I'm going to put in two pieces of six. Then I'm going to put in another turn, I'm going to add in another block section, 
a four and I'm gonna raise that slightly for the raised brake run and then you can put in the actual brake run. I'm gonna put in his 12 again but I'm gonna do it in two track pieces of six like that. And then I'm also going to add on the catwalk. I might try and do some sort of a conda style ending so I'm gonna start building from here. I'm gonna turn off the catwalk, make sure it's four meters again. And I think I might do like an inversion into the brakes, like kind of a slow one. So if it starts to come around like this, this is actually what Condo was meant to have. It was meant to have some sort of like a Velocicoaster style Mosasaurus roll into the brakes. And then it they opted for having the airtime hills at the end instead, because obviously the rest of the layout didn't have any inversions. It would have probably been a bit weird if just one random inversion at the end of the ride. And then from here I've kind of got a bit of choice, so I think I might probably do another airtime hill here. It's like a bit more of a speed hill now, but if you grab these pieces here, it's a little smooth afterwards obviously, and I can make that sort of like a banked airtime hill almost. I might pull that out a little bit so you get a bit of heart lining on it, and you can go back and smooth that and you get sort of a nice transition to that final version because it banks out this way and then comes into banking out that way. That's something that I should probably mention actually. Just in terms of flowing for elements, you want your banking to kind of flow as well. It keeps banking the same way, then pauses, and then keeps banking the same way. I don't really know how to explain it, but like this starts to bank round as if the um, centre of rotation is spinning anti-clockwise. Then it goes over this airtime hill and then still keeps going anti-clockwise. It's kind of just about flow of elements. That's a good way to put it. Same with this. So you start to twist to the left and then you drop down and then twist into the right. So you kind of get the nice rhythm transition between the two, two banking ways. I don't know what's the best way to put it, but it, you kind of just want to have a nice rhythm with your layout. It's probably the best way I can say. So I mean about the rhythm, so it's kind of going from one side and then coming back to the ground. Make sure it hits the ground flat. If you're not turning a corner, the, the bottom of drops needs to be flat, just because the laterals will make that insane. Like, say if I'm coming out of this drop here, because it's then twisted into the same angle, I see quite a lot of people building transitions to an element like this. Just because of the way you smooth it, it's probably not even the way you're making it, it's probably just the way you smooth it. So as it comes around, like the laterals are bottom of that drop, nearly three, so it needs to be kept flat at the bottom of dips if you're not going from left to right. So this will now come into this kind of... It's kind of a bit like the sideways wave turn on Hyperion, but on a lot smaller scale. So it kind of comes into it like that, and you have that nice transition here between uh, the two wave turns. And it comes up, does the inversion, goes into the brakes. Brakes look like they're going at an alright speed. And then it just comes back into the station. And that's it, we've finished the layout. So I'll just go around and give it a bit of a smooth and then I will show you what the next steps are. The next step I would do, just before custom supporting it, is I would add the transfer tracks. So for this, I would delete the piece you have between your block section and the station. So I'm going to delete this piece here. You can kind of add transfer tracks wherever you want on the end of your ride but I'm just going to add them here just because I think it would make the most sense just for how they'd build the actual station building and incorporate that into it. So how I would do it is I would build your 180 degree turnaround there out of the 4 meter track sections, build a piece of track the same length as your transfer track and then you can do that again on this side, build that track section. But you just have to think about like logically how your transfer tracks are going to work so you can connect this back up obviously this piece of track for the transfer track to work has to slide so if it slides to where these pieces are then you would want your block sections after here uh, you wouldn't have a catwalk on those and you can put in your other block section that side again turn off the catwalk and then you can delete these pieces like that there you go so that's what it looks like so this piece here would slide over to the other two here and then you would dump either the one of the two trains here and while I'm here I may as well show you how the trains work so I would put this into block section mode because of the block sections it will probably give you the option to add maybe three trains say if you've got another block section in or you have a second launch which would act as a block break itself but since this one only has the one launch it would probably just have two trains and to make sure that they don't get stuck on the launch, I would probably put this at about 45 seconds. Obviously you can test it. So that is the minimum departure interval, which basically means it can't depart unless 45 seconds has passed. So we'll see how that kind of works out. 
this one just pulls back in and it's still waiting for that one so I would mainly maybe reduce that to 35 and see how that works speed it round again you wouldn't really want to go any less than 35 or 30 because that is still like really good operation so it pulls back into the station there you go so it pretty much is perfect I'd leave it on about 35 then for the sort of layout obviously longer coasters might have longer ones or shorter ones you never really know you just have to have a mess around with it but you just have to realistically think like how long would it take the ride ups to get all the guests off open up all the restraints get everyone on and then check the restraints like 35 seconds is probably the shortest you would ever be able to do this in but yeah good operations for the coaster so now we're going to talk about custom supporting which for some reason on pc is under buildings and walls under framework uh, I can't remember where it was on console but it should be probably around the same space underneath walls so for the actual transfer tracks you would get this long coaster connector piece or at least this is how I do it so if you set this piece like this you want to line it up to that so it's perpendicular with it and then you want to bring this up so probably just about the bottom of the track or maybe a little bit lower then bring it across a little bit so it needs to cover all sides so I'm probably going to choose three pieces so if I build it like this I'm gonna go with the smaller uh, version of this and you can connect on this one so it supports it on both sides and then after that I built the first two I would make it a building just so the building set is easy to edit with and I'm gonna turn that around bring that all the way over to about here because that's kind of where the transfer track ends plunk that down there we go the locomotive rail is what you want for your next piece and then again you can just line that up on top Make sure it comes all the way to the end. And then you would want to add two sticky outy bits like this on either side. So you can just do that by copying the bit that's already sticking down. And then I would copy the whole thing, move it over, and then copy just this center piece like this, and then move that over to the end. And there you go, and you've got your transfer tracks. That's pretty much all you need to do. Obviously you can build the stage building around it, or if you really want to, you could add a little box, like an operator's box. I know that on console you can probably make this out of art pieces, but on PC, if I can find it, there is a nice TMTK one that I normally use. There we go. Like an electrical unit box. And you can just kind of stick that on the railing or something. Maybe put one on either side. And that would give the uh, ride-ups the control of the transfer track to get the trains from the actual layout onto here. And then obviously you can build your building around that if you wanted to, it's completely up to you. But yeah, that is how you do your transfer tracks. This is obviously kind of styled after an Intamin coaster, so I'm going to be uh, custom supporting it as if it is an Intamin. So I will do the first part first, just this bit here, just so you kind of got a basic understanding of how the custom supports are going to work. So you want one of these for an Intamin, I'm going to colour all the supports black as well. And then you need your footer piece. So for this one, I think I'll use this smaller footer. And if you turn on, is it position snap? Yeah, if you turn on position snap or align to surface, you can snap it on the bottom like that. And then just obviously make that the same color just for uh, continuity. And then just like the transfer tracks, I would make that a building just so you can keep up with it a little easier. So I will put one just here, which is in the center of the track just like that. I would move this down to about where you want it to be and then the connector piece I would use for an instrument is this coaster support connector here. Again if you've got the position snap or align to surface on it will align it where it needs to go make sure it's the right color. Then I would twist it around like this and raise this bit into position and there you go you've got your first custom support. Quite easy but obviously as you can tell they will probably get a lot more complicated so I will copy this one over to add another one here obviously I need to really reduce the height of this one like that and then for the supports going underneath the launch section I would probably just remove this and then have this connection piece sat on top of there then you can just move that into position and you can just move these connectors in place I'd probably put one maybe every two of these rivet things there you go and then this from this point is probably where the supports get a bit complicated so I will add another support um, just about here and then one of these needs to come over to about there and then you can start to support the main bit so because of the pressure here you kind of need to imagine it as if you are looking where the forces are going as you are supporting it so I'll add in a support here but 
the support for this, when you think about the train coming over it, the support isn't going to be going directly into the floor, it's mainly going to be going kind of outwards like this. So if you add like another support here, put another footer in, and then you need this piece called a flange. Just think about how you would make this out of metal, like you wouldn't have this whole piece cast as one, even though it's quite small. You probably have a flange about halfway up the sideways piece. And then again, just as it starts to get up the main type of the top part, I'd probably copy that over, bring it up, and as you've probably noticed, it's not going to really work with this support here, so I would just move this support down and that way, which you'll have to move the flange for as well, and then move that so that it connects on the end of there. Because think about where the forces are going, the forces, especially at this part even more so than there, are going to be going outwards down this way instead of like directly downwards so you can kind of move that back over add in another support going down keep that one going to the floor and then add in your footers like that continue the theme of weird looking supports is probably the best way to put it um, I'm gonna build a support coming upwards sort of like this that will get to about this point of the ride and then the rest of the top part will be supported from inside this part here so if I add in sort of this piece, like that, add in a connector piece, I think this would probably be called, at the top, move it back a bit, and then you can stick on your coaster connection piece, move that down a little bit. Most of this is just kind of trial and error just to see what works. The whole thing back towards the coaster, like that. Because when the track actually comes, you would probably have this connection piece already like welded into part of the body of the track. And you can just stick a flange there, which is what would connect it to the actual support. And then from this piece, you would probably have one going downwards like that from there. Forces that will be pushing back this way, and the forces as it was turning upwards to be pushing down this way, so it supports both of those. Then in your footers at the bottom, and then just because of how long these track sections are, I would probably add some flanges about halfway down. And then you can kind of make it even more secure if you wanted to, like even more strong, and add some uh, pieces that connect the track supports together, sort of like this. So I might add this one here, and then if I copy this one with a smaller track section like that, then I can connect the two of them. And then just to finish it off, obviously because this all wouldn't be one big cast piece, I would add a flange that would connect this part to that part. And then you would probably have two flanges about here that would connect all of those pieces together. And as jank as that looks, that is probably what they would do. Like if you look at the uh, supports for Velocicoaster's top hat or the Batman Rides top hat, they all do look quite jank, just like this. So that is definitely viable. And then to add in the support for the actual peak of the top hat just here. The top normally wouldn't need it, the track would normally support itself because there wouldn't be much forces going on at the top, but as it starts to come down the drop I'd say probably around here, you would need your first support in. And then this section might actually angle down a bit like this. And you can bring this section if you want to down to the floor, which you would probably have another one about here, connecting it to the ground as well. So you've got two of them supporting it vertically. And then because of how tall this actual tower almost that you're creating of support is, I would add in another one of these sideways ones off of this side. Sort of slot that into place like that. Make sure it's not sticking out awkwardly in any of the sides. And then obviously I would go back to the top of this and add in all of the cross like the cross section cross tie pieces to make sure that it is as strong as it needs to be then i will probably steal this support that's probably one of the best things about making supports is you can just steal them from other parts of the ride like you think that part probably be quite well supported there then just steal the support stick it somewhere else in the layout that you think you'd need it and then it saves you having to rebuild the entire support again. So then that has created a nice connection piece between these two supports here. It kind of makes it like it was always meant to be. But it wasn't. It was a complete accident that it happened but a happy accident because it was good. <laughs> and then just add in and then you need to add a few more connection pieces so that the track 
is actually stuck to this support as it goes down. So I'll probably add in one here. If you haven't, because at this point I haven't got room for one of these little bars. So I can just kind of sneak in one of these track sections. And if you just turn one of those around like that, then you've got a nice little connector piece. And then it's probably a good point actually to add in some of the cross tie pieces for these. So again, that's too big. Move that down to the same point here. And then that kind of looks all right for how the coaster is supported. Then you just have to think about how big these pieces of metal would be before they would need another connection piece. There you go. And we have a fully custom supported first top hat, apart from this section down here. And that's your first piece. So I will go through the rest of the ride and do custom supporting bits. I'm not going to show you all of it because that would make this video like hours and hours long. <laughs> and then we can move on to the next part of completing this coaster. I've paused at this bit, this is just kind of to show you how jank you can really go with supports. Now as you can see the supports at the moment are right over the station, so what I would do with this, or what I'm going to do on this specific one anyway, is add in these... It's okay to have supports going through the station, uh, it's completely fine, it's definitely allowed, there's a lot of coasters that do it that are uh, in real life, that you can look at precedents of, but having coasters supports that go through the station, sometimes it just kind of has to happen. There is a lot of a lot of janky coaster supports out there. I think I can put images of some of the worst on screen now. So there's quite a lot of uh, bad ones. You just have to remember that these are real. So quite a lot of the coaster supports that you will make will be a bit questionable, some of them. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they're wrong. And it doesn't necessarily mean that these wouldn't happen. Never really think, oh, this wouldn't work. I'd definitely look at precedent images first. So this is what I've done for these two. This one on the corner will be much easier because I can just have one support going down and then one to brace the side of it. But these two, I'm going to bring these down actually into the station, which like I've said is absolutely fine. These would be connected probably in real life. They would go through the station and then underneath and have the footer underneath. So you don't really need to add a footer to these just yet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a beam going down like this, like that. And that's what the support would kind of look like. Most coaster supports, you would need them for laterals and um, positive g-forces, negatives, so that's airtime. You don't really need them too much, you're mainly just supporting the actual track. The positive g-forces are what pushes you down into the track, along with gravity is pushing the track down as well, hence why the bottom of this drop has a lot of support, but then the top of it most of it's negative forces, so it's pushing you up. So you wouldn't really have that much weight on the track coming over here because the airtime's that aggressive as well. There wouldn't be that much weight pulling up. So hence why that has got not many supports on it. Then the same with this here. There's quite a lot of like lateral forces going to the right because of how this is turned. The, the um, train would be pulling on the track to the left as well. So that's why the supports are going sideways. And then again with here, as it turns into the stall, you would have forces exerting to the left and the train would be pulling on the track as well, which is why you've got these supports in and the side ones, um, just so extra support really. And then this stall element here, I'm not going to support the entire top part where the cursor is up until another support, which will be exactly the same as this one, so I can just copy it over, will be about here. Just because this part of it, again, doesn't really need supporting that much. These are all, you'll have quite strong like floating hang time almost up here so you wouldn't really need any supports on this because there's little to no forces on the track but then it's when it starts to twist and go back down to the ground again you'll need more supports like this so i think that was just something worth mentioning that when you're doing the supports on your coaster just think of the forces that are going to be on that specific piece of track just another thing as well i thought i'd mention that if you make good supports from the start of the coaster you can just copy and paste all of the supports that's basically what i've done for most of it like for these they're all the same this support here i've used there 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 <laughs> uh there there literally everywhere and like with this support here just for the start the turnaround you can just copy and paste the support that you've been using and just use it again right so the next step is to make your coaster safe which is probably the most important thing when designing a coaster and doing anything in the theme park you want it to be safe so the very aptly named don't die fencing needs to go around probably the entire site of your coaster now you can be a bit playful with this obviously it doesn't have to go around all of the coaster like here i can add like fences like this 
that kind of go either side here and create almost like a path that goes underneath the stall and underneath this inversion here. So like certain areas that are high above the riders, uh, you can obviously have guests coming underneath these, but you wouldn't want a guest really coming through areas like this because it's sort of too low and sort of like too in the ride area. You could almost create like a feature out of this, uh, put something in the middle, fencing around it and then like a path. Same with this, like this kind of naturally leads itself just because of the long out and back like L shape to having a plaza here but then you would want fences all down this side and all around the first launch and just basically the entire track. So it blocks off uh, any access to people and just makes the ride a lot safer so no one can get any access into the area. Right then, once you have added the don't die fencing all around your coastal layer, as you can see, I've kept this little cut through here just to show you what you can do with it. You can be quite crazy with it. It doesn't have to be as aggressive as this, like going, like leaving a bit of ride area around it. It can go quite close. And I'll put some images on the screen now of different uh, ride uh, safety don't die fencing that I've done in different parks that it's actually themed. It doesn't have to be just all this like boring um, chain link fencing. It can be loads of different things. So you can theme it in as you theme your ride. And the next part that I would do is utilize the terrain paint. I don't see enough people doing this. You really, really need to have a look at terrain painting. So what I would do is just think about how the ride area works. Like not a lot of this part of the layout and quite a lot of other parts would get a lot of sunlight. So you probably have just a bit of dead grass around this part, especially this piece here, because there's obviously a lot of that covering the um, a lot of track covering the grass and some parts around it like you would probably get a bit here obviously none there um bit down here and then you would just get like bits covering the low to ground areas just adds a nice very subtle piece of realism to your creations and then that's really this coaster finished um the next step from here would be of course to theme it i'll put some images on the screen now of some of the themed coasters that i've made theming is one of the most important things you can do for a coaster even if you're not the most confident coaster builder, you can still be really good at theming. It's a different set of skills. Some people are better at building realistic coasters, some people are better at theming. I'm definitely more on the realistic coaster side, but that's just because I'm a big coaster nerd. And I really hope that in the next park series, I will get better at theming. I like to think I have. I can see that I've improved from Wonderworld, so if I can improve any more than that, I'll be really happy with it. But yeah, this is your realistic coaster. 4 meter smoothed, all custom supported, made safe, made realistic with all the transfer tracks and everything. And yeah, we are finished. So I will end this video out with a POV. If you've got any more questions on anything uh, realism coaster related, please do not hesitate to comment them below. I respond to every single comment. And yeah, we have created a realistic coaster and I really hope this helps you create a realistic coaster for yourself. I know that's something a lot of people struggle with, are there any other tutorials you'd like to see me do as well, whether it's coaster related or theming related, theme park related, anything Planet Coaster tutorials, let me know in the comments and I could make that into a video. So that's it. Thank you so very much for watching. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I've really enjoyed doing it. It's been a good tutorial to uh, make and show you all how to do. And I really hope it helps you all uh, in your coaster building in the future. I will end this video with a POV, so thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.